most of the calls I got in my four sell by owners were from realtors. This is how I know this stuff. It's not on this side. It's actually from being on your side of it. And yes, it's annoying. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Sammy Fryer, licensed realtor in the state of South Carolina. And if you're watching this video, then most likely you either already are or considering to be a for sale by owner to list and sell your property. And there's a couple of different reasons that I made this video. The number one obvious one is being a realtor. This gives me an opportunity to get in front of you and to share some things with you that will either A, be helpful and or B, position me to have an opportunity to potentially gain your business. That's obvious, no need to lie and be fake about it. However, there are some other details to me personally that make this video relevant for you. Number one being prior to getting into real estate and getting licensed as an agent, I myself had conducted multiple transactions as a for sale by owner seller successfully. And I learned a lot of things that helps me understand both sides of this situation now. And that positions me to be able to share some things with you that will not only make it obvious that I can relate, but will actually probably be helpful. So let's start there and merge all this together. It goes without saying that if you're watching this video, you have probably had upwards of a hundred phone calls from real estate agents like myself that are trying to gain your business. And there are legitimate reasons for that, but for you as a home seller, it can be really aggravating because every time the phone rings, you're trying to sell your home. So you're hoping that a buyer is gonna be on the other side of that unknown number that's calling your phone. And it turns out to be yet another real estate agent telling you the same things you've probably heard 55 times prior of why they should get the opportunity to sell your house. So if you will give me just the next few minutes of your time, then no matter what means you choose for the sale of your home, I believe that you're going to walk away from this video with some very helpful insights and understandings that are going to set you up for better success. So with that being said, let me go to one more personal note that kind of helps you understand why I'm sitting here doing this right now, at least in part. And that is that as of yesterday, I got the email with a clear to close for seller who was originally a for sale by owner will be closing next Tuesday, July the 2nd. And that seller is going to net, that is take home, over $6,000 more than what she was originally going to net whenever we first started communicating when at the time she was a for sale by owner. And just to give you a little of the background on that, the way that I know that is because I brought a buyer to the table and the buyer that I had, the home was out of this buyer's budget by a certain amount. And so the offer that we sent in, the seller felt was too low. The seller made a counter offer and had my buyer accepted that counter offer, this seller would have walked home with less than over $6,000 than what she will this Tuesday. And that's after paying myself and a buyer's agent commissions. And by the way, that for sale by owner listing was up on Zillow, I think upwards of about six months. We were under contract just at two weeks after signing our listing agreement and we're six weeks outside of that now and we're about to close. She had to do a lot less work, a lot less effort, but I'll swing back around to that on the back end of the video. What I wanna do is give you some tips that if you are going to pursue selling your home by owner, will help you out a lot. So let's go through a few key things that you really need to do to get the best value for your home if you're gonna do it yourself. And number one is probably the most important or tied for the most important, you need to get a proper valuation on the house. So unless you are a retired realtor, like a lot of for sale by owners are, or you have someone close to you in the business, then you most likely have not valued your home through a professional. Realtors everywhere in your area, including myself, my contact information is down in the description. If you want a complimentary valuation on your home, reach out to me and I will supply that for you. It is imperative, it is crucial that you price the home correctly because I'm just gonna be bluntly honest with you. If you overprice the home and you're a for sale by owner, you might as well be prepared to let it sit for months and months and months with little to no activity. It's going to be quick, painless, it should be complimentary and you can get an accurate professional valuation for your home. You've got to do that. So I cannot stress enough, get a realtor to give you a proper accurate valuation for your home before listing it by owner. Secondly, please get professional real estate photography. Typically the cost for real estate photography is not a super high expense and it's gonna be well worth it. If you wanna get an idea of what I'm talking about, go look at some listings from some of the high-end agents in your area you can go look at some of my listings that are active right now and compare the photos in those listings 
to those of for sale by owners in your area may be yours. And I promise you, it won't take long to find one on this side and find one on this side and see exactly what I'm talking about. I cannot stress it enough. First impressions matter. Get professional real estate photography for your listing. Next, you need to prepare the home for every showing. What I mean by that is you need to make sure that the air is set correctly. I have been in showings, in homes, where it's like 90 degrees in the house. Buyers are already turned off. Go to the house, cut the lights on, cut the ceiling fans on, make sure there's no mess left anywhere. I've been in homes where food was left down in the catch in the sink that needed to be ran through the garbage disposal. Make sure the house is ready to show before each showing. That's a huge tip that I cannot stress enough how important that is. You only need one buyer to make an offer on your home, and it's very easy to run people in the other direction by not being diligent in these certain areas. Next goes along with the photography, but it's not quite as important, but please give some thought to the description that you write for the property. You may think it does not matter, but yet again, first impressions are so crucial. We know this, particularly in the subconscious. It, it is important. And sometimes when dealing with for sale by owners and viewing their listings, the descriptions are terrible. It doesn't mean that you have to write some Pulitzer nominated poem for the description of the property. I'm not saying that, but there is a place that you want to sit where you're putting together a professional description of the property that's inviting, that's attractive to where the descriptive elements of the property are engaging and not lackluster. It, it really does matter. It's very helpful. So simply put, just put some thought into the description that you're writing for the property. And finally, if you want to get the home sold and get it sold as quickly as possible, put some effort into your marketing strategy beyond just listing the property on Zillow for sale by owner and waiting for calls to come in. Because as you know, most of those calls are going to be from realtors. Most of the calls I got in my for sale by owners were from realtors. This is how I know this stuff. It's not on this side. It's actually from being on your side of it. And yes, it's annoying. And by the way, in those transactions, those sales didn't even come from any of the calls I got through my Zillow listing. I did get a few. Most of the calls were realtors, but those sales actually came from people that I either knew or or somebody that was nearby in proximity and actually saw the sign that I put out at the street, which takes me back to the point, put some effort into your marketing strategy. Signage is important. Putting a for sale by owner sign in the yard is good. If you can put another sign out at a main road outside of the neighborhood, that's even better and helps also. But secondly, tied along with that is your digital marketing strategy. You really need to have a social media campaign. It would be great if you had a video tour that you could upload to YouTube or some sort of social media platform. I would not recommend simply creating a Zillow listing and then just sitting back. I've got buyers that I'm working with right now that came through homes.com they don't even search on Zillow. So only a fraction of the market is actually on Zillow and it becomes a numbers game. And that's really one of the biggest things uh, behind the for sale by owner frailty is the numbers game, but this is a key component of it. So don't limit yourself. You wanna get as much exposure on your property as possible if actually getting it sold in a timely and efficient manner is your goal. And by the way, another case study that you could do to test these things I'm saying, go look at for sale by owners on Zillow and look at the amount of days that they have sat. And you will find frequently for sale by owners up over 150, 180, 200, 250, 280 days on Zillow. And a lot of these homes, especially when you look at the quality of the home, at least from the outside looking in, they really probably shouldn't have sat that long, especially at this time of year that we're in, in our market, which is a whole nother subject. We do weekly housing market reports every Tuesday at seven. Make sure you go check those out. Those are five, no fluff, no frills, very practical, very core tips that will help you get your home sold as quickly as possible and to bring back the greatest return. Now let's talk about the reality. The reality is that for sale by owners, FISBOs, have trouble getting their homes sold frequently, much like the seller that I'm working with now. And there are reasons for that. Even if you do the five things that I just mentioned and you execute them well, you're still a for sale by owner. Now me personally, for my clients, I'm going to shop every property that's available that may fit their needs i.e. the deal that I've got now. Remember the story. I brought a buyer to the table. I'm just going to be honest with you. A lot of realtors across the country don't even look at for sale by owner listings as a rule. And the reason why is because in a lot of cases, unless they are a retired realtor or somebody close to them 
was in the business, for sell by owners are not trained to conduct the transaction. They're not trained in the contracts. They're always not the most communicative, whereas an agent on the other side would be a professional. And so the realtor ends up doing almost double the amount of work for the same amount of pay, not to mention the liability that could be involved with dealing with someone who's not licensed in the field. And so I'm just telling you, it may be an ugly truth and I don't do this. I just clearly gave you an example that I just try to find the properties my buyers are looking for. But I promise you, as a for sale by owner, you're cut off from a large fraction of the market. There's a reason that the National Association of Realtors shows that only about 7% or less of homes are sold without a real estate professional involved in the transaction. So the biggest negative is exposure. When you go for sale by owner, even if you nail these other five things, you're suffering from a great lack of exposure to the open market. The second thing that I want to point out is all of those five things that I just mentioned, your realtor brings them to the table. Included in the cost of our services is professional photography and video tours, exposure to the entire market. I know I personally run aggressive social media and internet marketing campaigns. We put out all the necessary signage wherever signage can and needs to be to make sense for a home, obviously based on, you know, its proximity in the neighborhood, that kind of thing. But even more than that, for my clients, my seller clients, as a rule, I try to make sure before every show and that the home is set up and prepared to show well, that is cutting lights on, cutting fans on, adjusting the thermostat, making sure that everything is comfortable and as bright and homely as possible in the home so that that first impression is good when that prospective buyer walks into the home. But then I also go back to the homes and make sure that everything got shut off so that their energy bills aren't running through the roof. So I'm going to go to the home before each showing and prepare it. And then I'm going to go back and make sure that everything was cut off and put back in order after the showing is over. So your realtor at least should be doing all these things that we mentioned and more to get your home sold because that's how they get paid. That takes me to the money. Usually you're going to have to pay a buyer's agent anyways. So really you're choosing to go for a sell by owner only to avoid paying one agent that is half of the commissions you would pay, not the entirety, because most times a buyer is going to come to you with an agent. You're still going to need to pay them. And pretty much every for sale by owner I speak with is offering buyer's compensation. So you're taking the responsibility on to take all the workload, to put all the pressure onto yourself and betting on yourself that you can get it sold in a certain amount of time. And a lot of people, by the time they pay lawn care, electric utility bills and insurance have almost paid, depending on the price of the house, whatever that other half a commission would have been anyways, if they would just let a realtor get in there and get it sold for them. The financial aspect that I'm going to save money by being for sale by owner, I'm going to submit to you is a complete myth, not only for the reasons that I just mentioned, but also what's the even bigger one. I would never offer a for sale by owner seller a comparative price to a comparative home. Why? Because they're not paying real estate fees. And you wouldn't do this either in any other area of the world. As an example, if you hired a professional to do a job where they charge parts and labor, but you found out that they did not have an expense for parts because the parts were given to them, would you pay them the full amount or would you feel slighted? You would feel slighted. Hey, you're charging me for parts, but you didn't have to pay for any parts. Why am I paying this $300? And you would want that taken off the bill. If I was a buyer and I've done this, because like I said, I've done these transactions in the past on both sides, dealing with a for sale by owner, I am always going to deduct if they've got the house priced accurately in terms of the standard market value, we're going to deduct six, five percent or three, two and a half percent, depending on if there's any agent involved from whatever that price is, because you're not paying real estate fees. So that's five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars, whatever the number may be that I'm not going to pay you for that. Real estate fees are baked into the price of homes. You don't have any. And so any savvy buyer is going to understand that. And if they have an agent, I'm certainly going to tell my buyers that, hey, look, they're not paying real estate fees. And to make it make sense, if your house had one right next door that was identical in every respect and that house's true value was $350,000 listed with a realtor, what makes you think that your home is truly valued also at $350,000? So any savvy agent is going to look at that and say, well, if we're going to pay the extra money, 
we might as well buy this house because they're just pocketing that money. And what have they brought to the table to warrant it? And then finally is you have to actually conduct the transaction. You know, in selling and buying homes, there's a ton of paperwork that has to be signed. There's a lot of contract language. There's a lot of nuance. You're dealing oftentimes with lenders and with real estate attorneys. And when you have a real estate agent, they are shouldering about 80 to 90 percent of all of that. So a lot of times a real estate agent sellers are really only getting periodic updates, but there's really nothing for them to do because a good agent is doing all of it. They're preparing the house for showings. They're making sure that the grounds are maintained and keeping an eye on the property. They're dealing with all the aspects of marketing. They're dealing with the buyer's lender. They're dealing with the real estate attorney or the closing attorneys. They're keeping up with the inspections and handling all the negotiations, at least as a middleman. Obviously, you know, you're really through them in that respect, but they're making those phone calls. They're taking those phone calls. They're keeping up with those emails. They're doing all those things from somebody that has been a for sale by owner and purchased from for sale by owners as an unrepresented buyer. And now as a licensed realtor in the state of South Carolina, I can tell you that outside of particular circumstances and scenarios, and there are some that exist, but usually 85% of the time, there's really no good reason to try to go at it alone and sell your home on your own. That's just the bottom line. And the data and the realities of the process screen that to the public. And so with that being said, if you made it this far, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully that means you got something out of it. If you are choosing to continue to go at it alone and operate as a for sale by owner, then hopefully these tips that we went over, you'll be able to implement them. You'll find them very helpful. And I wish you nothing but success in your venture to sell your home. However, on the flip side, if the things I said made sense to you, then I would certainly love the opportunity to gain your business. All of our contact information for our office and my personal information is down in the description of this video. Give me a call. Let's get a valuation on your home. Let's get dialed in on a pricing strategy. And ultimately, let's get the home marketed and sold because that's what you want. And if you could walk away with more money and less work than you were going to, wouldn't that make the most sense? And I'm suggesting to you that nine times out of 10, that's probably the likely scenario when it comes to your home. And so again, I'd love the opportunity to gain your business. All of our contact information is down in the description of this video. I hope that you found this helpful. I wish you nothing but the best in your real estate endeavor to sell your home, no matter what path you choose going forward. I look forward to hearing from you. And in the meantime, you take care and we'll see you on the next video.